Alright, so today I want to tell you a little bit about music and mathematics. And in particular I want to talk about Pythagorean tuning. So the big idea is, if you're ever looking at a guitar, um, and I cannot profess to be actually decent at playing a guitar, but if you're ever looking at a guitar, what you end up saying is, you see all these different metal lines. And the idea is that as you place your finger down, the, the uh, string gets held down against that metal line, or the fret, and then the length of the string from there to the bottom is how much of the string will actually vibrate when you pluck the string. So if I don't hold it down, the entire thing plays, and if I hold it down somewhere, it is a shorter string that plays. So, if you're looking at the frets, you might not have thought about it too much, but what you might realize is that the frets, the distance between them, gets shorter and shorter and shorter as you go down the edge of the guitar. It is not the same distance between each of the frets. So how do they figure out where to put the frets? So the first thing I want to talk about is just the idea that when you're playing music, it comes out of this idea of a vibration. So if I pluck this string, you can actually see, if you look closely at it, that it's vibrating. The speed at which it vibrates is, we measure in hertz, or times per second, and the faster it vibrates, the higher the sound, or the higher the note, and the slower it vibrates, the lower the note. So we measure music in vibrations, and we call that... Uh, unit of measurement hertz times per second. So if I play a string and it vibrates at 288 hertz, it would vibrate 288 times per second. Or 500 hertz, it would vibrate 500 times per second. Now, as I wanted to vibrate faster, I could just start playing a shorter and shorter string. So as I move up, the string gets shorter, as the string gets shorter, it vibrates faster, as it vibrates faster, it sounds like a higher note to us. When we're thinking about music, we're thinking about uh, basically tones, the, the thing that we can talk about is the audible characteristic of sound. There's duration. There's intensity, there's pitch, and there's timbre. And these are all what make up tone, or the audible characteristic of sound. Duration, of course, is how long the note lasts, versus intensity is how loud it is. Pitch is how high it is. Timber is kind of like that almost feeling you get listening to a guitar versus a steel guitar versus a, a trumpet or a saxophone. Does it have that, like, that woody feel? Like, what does it sound like? Is it brassy? Is it tinny? It's more along the lines of timber. Now we're going to be focusing on pitch today. So pitch comes into to when we're talking about Pythagorean tuning. So pitch again is measured in hertz, is times per second, as we want to see how fast it's vibrating. It turns out, if you were to take a string of this length, and then cut it in half, and play a string of half the length, you'd end up seeing that the speed at which it vibrates would double. So this is kind of strange. So if I play the full string, and then I shorten it by half, I've actually sped up the vibrations by double. So a string twice as short, half the string, vibrates at twice the speed. We call this shift from one note to the next note an octave. Now, you can think about the octave as being that we're speeding it up twice as fast. You can also think of the octave as we are cutting the string 
the length of the string in half. Those are two different ways to think about the octave. These two pitches are so close to each other, we virtually call them, we call them by the same name. These are in the same pitch class. So two notes, an octave apart, are in the same pitch class. So if you ever see a low D and a high D or something like that, they are in the same pitch class. They're just separated by an octave or two octaves or three octaves and so on and so forth. Now this is an octave. But all the stuff in between, those are not an octave above the lower note, but they're still showing up in the guitar. So we could ask ourselves, where do these things come from? Now the reason why an octave showed up is because they just sound so nice together. Why do these other notes actually sound pretty decent together as well, or, or a lot of them sound decent together? So it turns out, it comes from this idea of doubling and, and things of that nature. So what ends up happening is, if you cut the string in half, and we're going to talk about mostly from the string length standpoint, it turns into a pretty decent thing. Well, what other fraction can we try? So half sounds really nice. What about a third? So what if we cut the string into a third? Now, if I bring my guitar back over here and I cut it into a third, we'd be way up here. We'd actually be above that octave. So the octave was, but the third was like way up there. So a third doesn't really necessarily work. On the other hand, so if I cut it into a third, it doesn't really give me something that's in between the two notes that I was looking for. But if I double this, this length, so if I double it, what I end up getting is I get two-thirds, and that one does sound decent. So if I pick up two-thirds, these are an octave apart, and since they're an octave apart, they kind of are in the same pitch class, they sound virtually the same, and this gives me something that's in between my half as long and my full string. So two thirds is between one half and one. This is the full string and this is the half the string. And those two things are an octave apart and two thirds is laying right in between them. In other words, two thirds is one of those frets that's sitting on the guitar that's in between the octave and, and the original full string. Two thirds is another fraction that sounds pretty decent. So we keep up playing this game. So what we could end up doing is we could start out, when we're trying to talk about Pythagorean tuning, it goes like that. We're trying to find the different string lengths compared to the original string length, so like these different percentages of the string, using the idea that the entire string sounds nice, what well, other notes would sound nice as well. So we start out with the entire string. And then what we do is we take a third of that string and see if that will be in between one and one half. So I'll put one half way down here. Now one third was not in between one and one half, but two thirds was, and two thirds was just an octave, uh, well I'd be an octave lower than the original one third. And that lands in, in between the, the original string length and the one half. So these two are separated by an octave, so they're in the same pitch class. And this two thirds is not an octave above or below the one or the one half. And so it is a new note, a new pitch class, that sounds pretty decent. Can we keep on getting to, close, to more and more pitch classes? Well, it turns out we can. What we'll do is we'll multiply this guy by one-third. So now, if this is the original string, we would do one-third of that. Now, one-third of that is two-ninths. But again, two-ninths is not sitting in between the one and the one-half. And so we'll double it to four-ninths, which is still not sitting in between the one and the one-half. And so we'll double that again and go up another, go down another octave to eight ninths. And that one is between the one and the one half. So here's another pitch class that sounds different than all the other ones so far. And it sounds pretty decent with what we've done so far. Now this is what I, these would be the Pythagorean tuning fractions. And you could keep on going forward and figuring out the next fraction and the next fraction. So the next one I multiply by one-third again and I get eight twenty-sevenths. 
And 827 again is now between 1 and 1 half, so I would double it to 1627, and 1627 works. And you can keep on doing this. And what would end up happening is, you would get a bunch of fractions. One of the things that we notice is that once we get to the 12th fraction, the 12th fraction is going to be really, really, really close to 1 half. So I'm not going to continue doing this because there are worksheets that are going to run you through this. But if you keep on doing this, once we get to the 12th one, that includes 1, so 1 will be the first, second, third, and so on and so forth. The 12th one is something really close to 1 half. like 0.49 something. Because it is so close to one half, what we do is we virtually call it one half. It is the note that sounds like we've made it an octave higher from the one. So since we've now made it to an octave, we'll just kind of stop right there and that's where the 12 note system actually comes from. But it's not equal to one half. So it's not equal to one half. And that is the reason why Pythagorean tuning no longer exists. There are other tuning systems, or it doesn't get used anymore, there are other tuning systems that are a little bit better at getting closer to half, or it's equaling one half. So for that reason, we've had, we don't use Pythagorean tuning anymore, but it was one way that, that this is kind of where these notes actually came from. So this is supposed to give you a decent idea as to where Pythagorean tuning is coming from, the worksheets uh, that, that you'll, you'll find on Canvas are supposed to give you a, 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 an ability to run through and actually figure out first the Pythagorean tuning fractions. This is what they're for. Second, after you do the Pythagorean tuning fractions, you're going to want to put them in order from largest to smallest because the largest, if you're looking at a guitar, the largest number would be the one, the full string. The next number would be this one. And the next number would be this one, and so on and so forth. Now the guitar is not tuned to Pythagorean tuning, but those fractions would correspond to each one of these notes. The unfortunate thing is your list is not going to be ordered from smallest to largest. So if you want to figure out how to put it in order from smallest to largest, divide them. 2 thirds is 0.67, 8 ninths is 0.88, 1627 and so on and so forth, you can turn them into decimal. Once you turn them into decimal, you can put the largest one on the left and the smallest one on the right. So here's your largest, your next largest, your next largest, your next largest, all the way down until you get to that thing that's really close to one half. Once you get there, you've basically figured out, if you had a guitar, where to put the frets. Because if you measure the distance from here to here, that would be the length of the string, one. And if you took those fractions and multiplied them by the length of the string, so suppose this is 30 inches, and you multiply those fractions by 30 inches, you get different inches, like 29 inches and 27 inches, or so on and so forth. And as you do that, it would tell you to measure from here to there and put a fret. Here to, so if it was 26 inches, you'd measure from here to here, 26 inches, and put a fret. And as you do that, you'd essentially just built a guitar. So again, I'm not going to go into uh, and actually do it on the, on the video, but that's pretty much where it's coming from.